Police agencies nationwide experiencing an officer shortage. A criminology professor at Florida Southern College says 86% of departments reported a staffing shortage. That's across the entire country. Joining us on the Coco News Live Line, professor of criminology at Tarleton State University, Alex Del Carmen. And good morning. Good morning. So let's talk about the reasons why this is happening. Well, I, I think, look, at the end of the day, what we've seen over the past few years is a great deal of negativity towards law enforcement. We've also seen movements across the nation where people want to defund the police and, you know, a lot of rhetoric. So so it is it is not really surprising to see that uh, existing police officers are reconsidering their career choice. And then you also have young people that are considering going into law enforcement that perhaps are thinking, well, you know what, maybe I'm going to go the federal route uh, if I still want to serve uh, and protect others, or I simply want to choose a different career. But have, hasn't there also been bad PR from police themselves when, when we're talking about police shootings and people kneeling on necks and so forth? Yeah, I mean, and that's a tough call, right? Because I think what it does show is the fact that we need to reform the police. There's no question. And, and I've always said, you know, we can do it intelligently. We can do it strategically. But we don't have to get out there and cast doubt on every single police officer, you know, that that's out there. So I think what we need is a scientific discipline response to uh, modernizing policing to make sure that that the say the recruiting efforts, the hiring efforts, all of those efforts are scientifically done so we can then prevent, you know, the the the, the bad situations from taking place as best as we can. So let's talk about, um, you know, also we're seeing a lot of officers, at least we are, you know, here in San Diego, saying that they will not get a COVID vaccine if it's mandated and that they will leave their jobs. So is this just going to add to the problem? Absolutely. And, and we've seen that in the military as well, right? So part of the problem that we have is that at the end of the day, you know, people are making those individual choices on something that relates to a policy by a police department. So Police departments, you know, theoretically hold people accountable for, you know, lying, for instance. This is the one job where you can leave and they can, they, can, they can show you your walking papers very quickly if, in fact, you lie about something petty. Um, so, so, so when it comes to your, you know, following policy, there's no negotiation there. So imagine a police department that says to a young police officer or to an older one, you have to get vaccinated. It's a matter of policy. And that officer says, no, I'm not going to do it. Well, at that point, you're violating policy. And so they'll show you the way out the door. So how can departments keep their men and women? Yeah, it, it's going to be very difficult because on the one hand, you've got a job, an individual that is exposed to COVID-19 in a way that most other people are not, right? So police officers are constantly or frequently answering calls. They're interacting with the public. They're arresting people. They're doing all sorts of things that put them in a high-risk category, and some of them may actually be uh, immunocompromised, and they may not even know it, right? So, so we have that sort of double, uh, you know, layer of concern as it relates to officers, and then also them infecting uh, victims or other individuals that they come across. And so, so the police department has to take a stance, and I think a lot of them have throughout the United States to say, look, you know, the vaccine works. We know that that it that it does help uh, individuals mitigate those those uh, uh, you know circumstances that may lead you to death, and it does protect our citizens. So as a matter of policy, we have to do that. So it's going to be one of those where they're going to have to either get really creative in sending some of the non-vaxxers uh, to perhaps you know a desk job or somewhere where they're not going to interact with others, and then uh, or, or simply get rid of them and hire individuals that would be uh, you know open to to the vaccination. Alex Del Carmen with us, uh, an associate dean and professor at the School of Criminology at Tarleton State University. Thank you so much. Thank you.